everybody, welcome to the Act Out from Open Mic to the Big Stage. Comedians tell us how stories were made. I'm your host, Duck. Today I'm with a very special guest. This guy has traveled across the country, right? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Yeah, and you've been doing comedy for 20 years? Yeah, from the whole house to the hen house. Oh my God, dude. <laughs> you crack me up, number one. I think I you're hilarious. It. Thank I, you. I love what you do with the comedy. I love what you do with the single mingle show. Hey, which we'll that's what's up. About. Okay. But our guest today is CJ Sedman Carter. Otherwise known as Canada Love. Yep. <laughs> otherwise known as a bunch of different monikers, like you were saying. Yes, I am who I am, and I'm a different, well, we all are different names. We're all fathers, we're all sons, we're all uh, buttholes, we're all, you know what I mean? We're all kings, just depending on the day, depending on which way the weather's blowing. So I decided to change my stage name around and play around with different personas on stage. And like you said, you go by Sedman mostly. Yeah, but Sed, people, man. People just call you Sed. They call me Sed. <laughs> So 20 years in the game. Yep, 20 years. How's it been so far? Shoot, a struggle. <laughs> <laughs> like, seriously, in 20 years, I've never been on television one time. I don't have one TV credit. Yeah. But for me, as a comic, I wear that as a badge of honor because I don't know any other comic who's been traveling professionally for 20 years without a TV credit. And who all you traveled with? Shoot, man, I've I've written, I used to uh, write for Corey Holcomb. I ghost write for Wild and Out with my boy Rip Michaels. Uh, shoot, man, I've been with a lot of different cats, man. Yeah. A lot of different oh, dudes, man. Wild. So, this started at the beginning. Where are you from? I'm from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I'm born and raised. Right originally. on. I started comedy right here on this stage. On the Addison Improv <laughs> on stage? On the Addison Improv stage. It was about, shoot, 20 years ago, K104 had an open mic night called Fat Tuesdays. At the time, Fat Tuesdays was like the number one open mic in the country because it started after Guy Tory's Fat Tuesday at the comedy store. Well... Then at Lee had this thing popping. I mean, like every other Tuesday, this room would be sold out. Her right. DJ BMW. I mean, it was it was crazy, man. People would be standing on the stage. I mean, standing in their chairs, dancing before the comedy show. Oh wow! That's yeah, insane. it was really nice. So man. it was a party. Yes. It was wild. And you had to be funny. Yeah. They I, didn't boo you. They didn't boo you, but they would just look at you real <laughs> quietly. And that's kind of worse than a boo, just having 300 angry black folks just looking at you like you ain't shit. Just like you need to kill yourself. And they definitely gave you that look. <laughs> yeah. So what made you kind of inspired to do it? Was there a comedian you saw when you were younger? No, I'm or? funny. Yeah, well, you are. I'm I funny. Like, that. I just, I've always liked making people laugh. Even when I was a child, I'd get in trouble. And my goal would be to make my mama laugh. If I could make her laugh, she wouldn't whoop me. Yeah. <laughs> so it's always been a dream of us ever since then, man. Just that laughter and that that, that chasing that acceptance. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So were you shy as a kid or you said you were the funny kid, like class clown? I've always talked crazy. Yeah. You know what I mean? I've always had the ability to look at stuff and say stuff and people are like, that's funny. But for me, that's the way I looked at it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I remember one time we were in church and um, I said, oh, mama, they lying. She said, what? I said, Mama, they lying. Jesus lying. She said, what? How Jesus is lying? Boy, I'm about to kill you. I said, uh. I said, Jesus said when he was on the stake, Father, forgive them, for they may not know what they're doing. I said, Mama, when the last time you put a painting on the wall, you didn't, know put the, you, didn't put, you didn't know you was putting that painting on the wall. I said, so they put this whole man on this stake and don't nobody know what they're doing? I said, that's a lie. And she was like, no, it means this, but it's. The way I look at stuff. Right. And it was just funny to people when they're hearing me say that type stuff. It's just the way I perceive the world. You know what I mean? And I'm bold enough to say how I see it and how I feel about it because it's how I feel. And we're all owed our own right to have our own feelings and our own opinions. Right. So I guess it correlates to laughter to some people because they're like, I've never heard anyone think about something like that. Well, but, it's a great perspective. Like, whenever we were putting up the ad for the Single Mingle Show, which we'll get talking hey, about. Hey, Single Mingle Show. Single Mingle Show. <laughs> I'm going to get your tickets. June 1st? Oh, that's an improv. There it is. 7.30. Okay. Uh, <laughs> All right. You were just cracking me up, just being natural, you know? Man, I, mean? I appreciate it. Just like, being silly and goofy, man. Yeah. It's fun. And mm -hmm. you were doing the jingles, which we'll talk about. Then. Okay. But uh, <laughs> let's talk about your comedy career a little bit more. So you decided right. just to go up on a whim, or did you no. practice? Man, Nana Lee, like, she used to always say, call in the radio if you think you're funny. So I'm like, okay. And I had, like, three jokes. But before I did the improv, it was an open mic called the Caribbean Grill. Shout out to Marvin Michaels. Shout out to Joe Fox. They ran the room for years. And uh, I went there, and, you know, I did pretty okay. So then I called K104, and I told... uh. My first joke was, uh, I don't like stupid people. I asked my girlfriend for some fellatio, and she jumped back and got real mad and said, you know, Dan, why don't I cook no Italian food? <laughs> and you're not laughing. It's probably because you think you're stupid, too. <laughs> 
And so that was like my first joke. And people were like, Sid, you can't say that on the radio. I'm like, I bet you I'll say it. And I said it on the radio. They were like, oh, my goodness. So I came up here that night, and I did I did well. I did so well Wednesday morning. She gave me a shout-out on the radio, and that's how much that's how I started. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, so you were killing it off the bat. So. I don't know if I was I was nervous and scared. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just and I had oh yeah. Shout out to Dean Lewis. Look, comics. I don't know where y'all at or <laughs> listen, comedians, seriously. I took Dean Lewis comedy class. Yes. But I had been doing comedy maybe about eight or nine months. But I decided to take the class because I didn't know the structure. So Dean is very, very good at teaching you a structure on how to tell a joke. But he also tells you this. Once you learn the structure, throw it away. So now you know how to if you have a weak joke. You know, you have a foundation on how you can build it up to get where you need to with your punchline, making it strong. So, hey, and guess where I took the class at? Uh, here. Right here. Yeah. <laughs> and he's still doing it. Yeah, this is, I, hey, man. I took the class also. It oh, was you awesome. did? Sweet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Dean's a great teacher, man. Dean's amazing. And so you took the class, and then when did you start getting booked? I imagine you started getting booked pretty quick. I'm going to tell you what I used to do. I would go across country, right, with 100 bucks, and I'll see somebody on a flyer on a show. And I'll tell the promoter, hey, man, let me get five minutes. They're like, all right, cool. I'm like, but if I'm not funny, keep this hundred bucks, right? Oh. And that's what I did. And nobody ever kept my hundred bucks. There you go. Well, no, because they didn't know that was my last hundred bucks. They're going to have a fight if they're going to keep it. But I didn't tell them that part. But <laughs> that was my play to get on stage. And from there, going to New York and L.A. and Chicago, just meeting different comics. And then also Fat Tuesdays, she had a lot of national comics that were coming through. On that Tuesday night. So I met them. Hey, Sid, you're pretty funny. Hey, let me, you know what I mean? So I meet with them, hook up, and then get on the road. So you were just networking nonstop. Basically just hustling, man. Just meeting people, doing your comedy, you know what I mean? Writing. And just trying to stay funny. And then I also made Comic View three months into doing comedy. You made Comic View? Yeah, it got canceled, though, but I still made it. Oh, so you were on, but they they never Uh, showed you? I auditioned, and it was, uh, they were going on tour. And the last three cities, the budget got too big. They cut the last three cities. Ah, oh, that sucks. Yeah. I made Def Jam, too. Yeah. It didn't air. Damn. <laughs> and then I also made Apollo and got booed, but they didn't air that out. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's like, everything I've made, it got canceled. So, if you want to put me on your television show, just remember this. Yeah. It's going to get canceled. <laughs> yeah. I, do you want to be on TV? Is that something you want to do? Uh, or because you were saying before that it's kind of a badge of honor to have been working this hard. I just want to be funny, man. Yeah. Like as far as the fame and stuff, nah, I don't. Fame to me is unnatural. I just like getting on stage, being funny, entertaining people, having fun. Yeah, and you're really good at crowd work. Hey, thank you. You are. You kill it. So where did that <laughs> confidence come from? Jimmy? I played basketball my whole life. So when the game is on the line and you got to put the free throw in, so it's not confidence. It's just you got to get the job done. Yeah. And if you're out there, you know, and then. My mom was always kind of tough, and she's like, "Oh, you sorry." So, having <laughs> the mama telling you sorry kind of it kind of uh, gives you a little more motivation. Like, well, you know what? I'm gonna get it done, no matter you're scared or nervous. You just hey, you grab your bootstraps and work. Do you get nervous when you go on stage? Still? I love it. I yeah, love it. Like I, I, I view it as excitement. I get like, excited. Yeah, coming to the stage, say it, man. I'm, ah! I mean, don't get me wrong. I get a little bit nervous beforehand, but most of the time I just... I, it's a good nerve. Yeah, you turn it into excitement and then it becomes a positive Man, thing like, instead of a negative thing. It's like about uh, when you have a girlfriend and you're about to kiss her for the first time. Mm. It's, you, you're still kind of nervous, but yeah. it's a good nerve. It's like... <gasps> yeah. Maybe that's why I keep getting broken up with so I can <laughs> start a new relationship where I can do that. So what was it like the first time that you got headliner, you know, when you went up and, and you did your 45 minutes to an hour? Man, there's no difference. No it's, difference? No, nah, man. And then headlining and featuring means absolutely nothing. Like when I get on stage, whether it's three minutes or 35, in my head, my job is to be the best. Be the dog in the room. Because there's nothing better to say, oh, you're the funniest. Or, you know what, I really loved you. Like, oh, my goodness, you said this. You know, So that's my adrenaline rush. That's my. That's why I'm a junkie for comedy. So it's not about where you at on the show. You know what I mean? Because it's headliners who can't follow their openers. Yeah. So it means absolutely nothing. Yeah, and if you crush it, sometimes they'll, they'll let you go for the weekend, because I've seen that Not happen. Sometimes they will let you yeah, go. Yeah, because you're too good. Because they're insecure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You traveled with Corey Holcomb for a while. You yeah, 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 man. Corey I'm pretty sure I saw while. you on stage with him. Too. Yeah. Yeah, so what was that like, touring? Man, it was cool. I mean, it's like when you're on the road doing comedy, doing shows, 
especially if you love it. Like that old saying, when you love something, you never work a day in your life. It's the same thing. So it's just, we're writing jokes, we're having fun, we're talking crazy, we're writing, being creative, we're taking chances. The one thing I love about being with Corey Holcomb on the road was, he's a big ass kid. Now, even though he talks about side chicks and her, <laughs> but when it comes to him being creative and, and, and coming up with material, he's not afraid to play. Yeah. He's not afraid to, to, to play. Like, I'm giving you a chance, I'm giving you an example. He was doing the, the Shaq All Star tour at the time, right? And uh, I'm like, hey, Corey, let me write a poem and you come behind it and say something. He's like, bet, let's do it. Now, mind you, I was backstage at the, uh, I forgot the name of the theater, but it had to be like three or 4,000 people there. Corey's like, let's do it. I'm like, when? He's like, now. I'm like, what do you mean now? <laughs> He's like, write the poem and we're going to do it then. I'm like, all right. I was like, when are we going to do it? He's like, at the end of my set. Now, you know, as a comic, at the end of your set, that's supposed to be the grand finale. Right. But Corey was like, uh, fuck it. Let's see what it does. <laughs> like, all right. Yeah. <laughs> so I went up and just told like some poems like, hey, you are the love of my life. You are the stars. You are the beauty one. You are the essence of me. You are the reason why I wake up and smile, why I grind and work 40 hours a week. And just to be with you, I write another 40 hours. <laughs> and Corey was like, yeah. That's what dudes say when they fresh out of jail. <laughs> <laughs> So we did it and it worked, you know what I mean? So that's one thing I love about being with the guy, man. It was he he wasn't afraid to play and just take chances on stage. The side chicks thing, is that a joke? Is what do you being, mean? Is he being serious about all these side chicks? What or? you mean about like side bitches or side yeah. bitches? Does he have a bunch? I don't know if he got a bunch, but he got a couple of them. All right, because I didn't know if it was a joke or not, because <laughs> his wife would always be at the shows with him, and I've been like, does he really have side bitches? What's he? He's like, she knows I got side bitches. Well, he's like, divorced now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. so that shit ain't going to last long. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, fellas, get a side bitch if you want to. Uh, make sure you like her more than your wife, because your wife might leave your black ass, so just remember that bullshit. That's the part of the joke a lot of folks ain't going to tell you about side chicks. They will ruin your marriage. <laughs> Period. A side chick will ruin your marriage. It's good for a little time. Yeah. But if you, you, it's it's going to happen. You're going to yeah. get caught. <laughs> and then you're going to be lonely because yeah. the side chick is like, I don't like you anymore. You're not married. Yeah. That was like, <laughs> what? What do you mean you don't like me anymore? I left my wife for you. Well, you know what? I don't want to be your man. Oh, my. Girl, I'm going to kill your ass. I'm going to kill you. I got three kids, and I got alimony I got to pay, and I left for your ragged ass. Bitch, I'm going to beat your ass up. I'm sorry. You were talking about the writing process. Mm -hmm. I'm curious. What is your writing process like? I write how I feel. Like when things piss me off, I write. Or when I'm happy, I write. When I see stuff I don't think that's fair, I write. So I just write. I write when I'm happy. I write when I'm sad. I just write like a... My partner, Cool Bubba Ice. Cool Bubba Ice. Shout out to Cool Bubba. Uh, he's a comic out of New York, out of New Jersey, actually. And uh, when I first started comedy, he told me something that scared me. He was like, said, after five years of comedy, your creativity dies down, you're going to quit writing. And that scared the brakes off of me. So yeah. I haven't quit writing. <laughs> yeah. That's what you told me. You said you're constantly writing. Yeah. And, and like... Uh, I don't know if we can talk about this, but you kind of inspired some of the local comedians, too. Uh, you said that, or the way you put it, was they, they kind of took your style. I don't know if I inspired, but I do know some cats have uh, borrowed some of my material, yeah. which is fine. I just write more. You know yeah. what I mean? So if I hear somebody, like, I did that. Oh, okay. Or a lot of times cats will hear my stuff sometimes. They'll use it, and I forgot I even wrote it until yeah. I hear them do it again. I'm like, oh, yeah, I did. You say that. <laughs> All right, I'll write some more. Yeah. You're really good at the misdirect, too. That's one thing I noticed. <laughs> you like that? Yeah, I like that a lot. Right. Where, like, you're going one way, and you're very sincere in your comedy. Like, the way you say <laughs> stuff. So you're going one way, and all of a sudden, you just, you know, turn yeah, that. And yeah. so that, that made me really happy. I was watching your stuff earlier today. What'd you see? What'd you watch? I, I was watching the, the Love Canada. Oh, show. the love advice. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, let's, let's get to it. Single Mingle Show. Yep. That's what we're here to promote. Okay, Single uh, Mingle Show. So. How did this come about? This is a uh, game show? It's a game show for singles and non-singles. Uh, a friend of mine, Tech G, Garland Norris. Shout out Tech G. I uh, met him in Dallas. And uh, he used to always go to singles events. And he's like, hey, he said, come with me. Like, I ain't going to no singles events. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I was doing comedy. I was dead broke. He was like, and at the time, well, shoot, Tech still making him a bunch of money because uh, he's an engineer. He was doing comedy. And... Uh, He's like, let's go to singles. Well, how much is it? He's like, 45 bucks. I said, shit, no. I can go to the club for free. <laughs> He's like, I'll pay for it. So we went, and I was like, this event sucks. So then as a comic, I was like, hmm, Tech, 
let's do this, these certain things, and that's how the game show evolved. I've been doing the show for 14 years now. 14 years? Yeah. Wow. And you've taken this across the country, too? Yeah, I did it a couple of, well, like I told a friend of mine, I've been doing the show for 14 years, but been only doing it seriously for the past four. Mm. I've been bullshitting for ten. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of fits with like how the game show works, though, because like you say, I'm not in control of this game show. Right? Oh no, man! It's the crowd audience. They run everything. Yeah, man. they run. That's everything. a wild perspective to have on something like that. Because what do you mean? Because most people who are creatives want to have total control. No, man, it's about the crowd. Like I told you, the single mingle show is just a good time. We're just going to have fun. And there's three rules to the show. We're going to drink, laugh, and have a good time. I'm just the MC, man. I mean, even though I created the games and everything, but if the crowd wants to go one way, we go with it, man. We have fun. It ain't about me. It's about us having a good time, meeting yeah. and mingling. So those singles events suck because it's hard to meet somebody. Like, if you've ever been to a speed dating event, you know how unnatural that is to yeah. sit there and talk to a chick for a minute. And then you put on a sheet of paper if she likes you, she doesn't like you. <laughs> then you talk to another chick, and she just heard your game you had from the last <laughs> chick. The, hey, I ain't got this much goddamn game. Shit. Y'all need to spread this out because I can't keep telling these same women the same damn lies. <laughs> so it's unnatural. So at my game show, when you're single and non-single, you're just meeting and mingling. We're taking pictures. I pull you on stage. We play stupid games. I got stupid prizes. I got dates I created. So it's just... A whole vibe of just having fun, man. Yeah. You know, that's it. Yeah. Because when you're drinking and laughing, having fun, it's easier to meet someone naturally to show you who you truly are. Because everyone has a persona of, hi, I'm yeah. James. I'm, uh, <laughs> I am. <laughs> you know what I mean? I am a custodial engineer. What? You mean you're a janitor? <laughs> no, a custodial engineer is a difference. What? <laughs> so with the games and stuff like that, you pre-plan those. But well, I have a will. Okay. I have a oh, game okay, show will. Cool. And it has uh, 12 different games. So, once again, I don't know where the hell this game going to land on. I don't know how they're going to play, how they're going to participate. We just see how it goes. And you change this up often, too. All the time. You? Yeah. All the games are different. I mean, the wheel is different. The games change. The people change. So, it's never the same show. You can come three times in a row and won't see the same show. Yeah, and we have a clip online. It's on the YouTube and on your social yeah. media. Uh -huh. Check it out, because you'll see how much fun it is. Like, it is a blast. Like, <laughs> I cannot wait to go to the show. So, yeah. it's going to be so much fun. You remember the dating game mm -hmm. with Chuck Woolery? Yeah. And uh, I used to love how they would talk about the dates. So, I was like, man, I want to see it. So, then with my game show, when I pull people on stage, I also film them going on dates about different locations, different right. restaurants. Because in Dallas, I love Dallas. This city is full of a lot of live spots you can go out on dates. But dating is expensive. So, me being a single as long as I have been, I found ways to go places inexpensively. Yeah. <laughs> so, you, you set up the dates, though, too. Well, right? I don't set up the dates. They set it up because they get on stage and play games. Oh. And then they pick and choose that they want to go on a date with somebody. And like you said, for the YouTube, you're going to follow them on the date and yep. kind of see how it goes and stuff like that. But I plan a location where they're going to go. And I have different date ideas that I've done oh, with. such a good idea. For, like, I got dollar store balling where I give both people 30 bucks and they have to go to the dollar <laughs> store. And they have to create their own event. What? It's so good. I'm sorry. I mean, but if you've ever been dating, like I have, and you don't have 100, 200 bucks to go to Papa Do's, I got 60. Hey, baby, guess what we're going to do? What? We're going to go to Dollar Store Balling. What's that? Yeah. I'm going to give you $30. I'm going to take $30, and we're going to create a date for each other. Yeah. I, I love it. And that's what, it's so funny to me because when you say the name of it, Dollar Store Balling, you know what I mean? Sure. But it's a great idea. And at the end of the day, if you're going to tell me, no, I only spent $30 on your ragged yeah. ass. <laughs> <laughs> kind of things do you have like that? Oh, uh, we have dollar store ball. And now I do have other dates that's more expensive. Okay, I have the Airbnb experience where uh, I hire a private chef and I have a private chef to come out and I discuss his culinary skills what he's cooking for the couple. Because if you have a little more money if you're dating, uh, you can go to downtown. You can rent an Airbnb for about 100, 150 bucks. You can hire a private chef for another 200 bucks. So that's about 400 bucks, right? Mm -hmm. But if you think about the room, the ambiance, the hotel, the food. If you go to Papa Do's, have a couple of drinks, you're right about 300, 400 bucks. You know what I mean? Right. But this way you have a hotel room and a whole experience. Ta-da! A whole nother vibe. A whole yeah. nother. Because women like to be, they want to feel special. So you have to create events for them. Right. So that's another part of the aspect of the game show. Uh, 
create different special events. I think that it's genius. I think the YouTube channel idea, recording this, oh, yeah. and then putting together the dates, like you know what I mean. Like mm-hmm. I'm, I'm down, dude. Oh, I was gonna say you also give a love advice. Yeah, yeah. I'm the world's greatest love expert. <laughs> yes, so when it when comes it, to the disclaimers, sometimes it's right, sometimes it's nice, but it's always love advice. Yeah, <laughs> I love, I love the rhymes, dude. I, I'm big on that because, yeah. like, you heard at the beginning. I have a rhyme for this. Like, mm-hmm. every podcast has a rhyme because it gets in people's heads and they remember it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you do that with that and the jingles, too, because mm-hmm. you have jingles for every game. Yep, got yeah. jingles for every game. I've had the one st- – I don't remember what it was. It was a dun 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 That's all I remember. And I was singing it all day in my head. I was like, oh, geez, it's stuck in there. That's sweet. That's so much fun. So, yeah, the love advice. Yeah, so – All right, I created it because uh, I was listening to Steve Harvey. And he's always giving advice, and it kind of pissed me off because he's been what, divorced like three, four times. <laughs> I'm like, dude, that's. I read his yeah. book, and he was talking about cheating on his wife in his book, and I was just like, "What?" He goes, "Well, she's not treating you right. You cheat on her." I was like, "Damn!" My girlfriend at the time gave me like, she was like, "You should be more like Steve Harvey." I was like, "Do you want this?" Page? <laughs> what page? Like, do you want this page here? Because this is the page I'm on. <laughs> yeah. So, like, my grandparents—they were married seventy some years. My parents were married forty years. So that's real advice. You know what I mean? Real love advice is not quitting. It's once you make that commitment, you're committed. Like, there's only two times you join yourself with God. One, when you get baptized. Two, when you get married. Yeah. And you're not supposed to break that commitment once you decide to join. So when I was hearing all this bogus love advice, I said, well, hell, I can give love advice too. Yeah. <laughs> And, and it's fun. And it's, you you have videos yeah. on the, the Instagram uh, that everyone can check out that actually where you give the love advice. Yes. And, and you have jokes written off of it, too. I'm the world's greatest love expert, man. <laughs> People write in to me from all different backs around, backgrounds of the world. I mean, from all different backgrounds, from all types of life. And I give the best love advice on earth, hands down. Yeah. There's no one better than me. <laughs> <laughs> So, are you working on more of those videos? Are you? Gonna uh, yeah, them? I have about twenty five of them pressed up now. Oh, cool! Yeah, I just haven't put them online. I'm lazy. I'm a comic. We talked about kind of your writing process. Mm-hmm. I want to talk about uh, advice that you would give to up and coming comedians, people who are just starting out. You know, you're twenty years in the game. It's what have you learned along the way? Man, Tyler Craig told me that he passed away. That's my partner. Shout out to Tyler Craig. Matter of fact, he and I would get together and write love advice. And uh, Tyler used to always say, "Say it. This comedy game isn't a sprint. It's a marathon. So enjoy the journey. And it's not about the destination. It's about where you're at. So if you're an open micer, enjoy being an open micer. You move up to feature, enjoy it. You move up to headline, enjoy it. Because this comedy game doesn't promise you riches. It doesn't promise you fame. You know what I mean? Just enjoy the journey, man, and enjoy getting better and writing and being funny. That's it. Now, if you do happen to get famous and funny, that's fine. But if you don't enjoy what you're doing, you know, and if you don't enjoy making people laugh, kill yourself. You're a sad, <laughs> pathetic individual anyway. But just enjoy where you're at, man. It's true. Like, uh, I'm two years in almost, and I'm not really anywhere. What do you mean? I mostly do open mics still. Sweet. Yeah. and But it's one of those things where I just go, like, hey, it's a process. It takes time, you know. And go we, have fun, yeah. man. Like... Do you want to be a headliner? That's what you want to be, like a national headliner? That's your goal? Maybe. I mean, that would be awesome. But also, at the same time, I would just like the host. I would like the feature. I love doing this. This is something that I'm very passionate mm-hmm. about. You know what I mean? So, we'll see. We'll see where it goes. This will open up a lot of doors, though. Yeah. Oh, Podcasts yeah, and platforms and stuff, this stuff here. Yeah. Because now, comedy isn't about to hear funny. If you have a podcast, if you get a million followers, you'll be a headliner. Yeah. Yeah. You might not be good, but you'll be a headliner. You'll be a headliner. You'll suck balls and not be funny worth shit, but hey, you'll be a headliner. It's so true. I've seen so many YouTubers and TikTokers who don't have the skills because it's too early in their career. And they get famous on this, and then they parlay it to money. But, like, I get it. You're making your money, but you really don't have what you need to be on stage for 45 minutes. They don't need it. The crowds don't care anymore, man. The crowd just... They want to see you. They want to take a picture with you. They want to be a, they're already a part of your life because if you're podcasting every day, you're talking to them every single day. You know what I mean? So you don't have to be funny. Just be charismatic and likable and have fun. It's the journey, man. But for me, I wanted to be funny. Like every comic who I've ever met that was my idol, they've all pulled me to the side and told me I was funny. Oh, wow. So for me, I'm successful because I'm like, man, my boy Tyler Craig thought I was funny. Shout out to JJ from The Sip. He told me I was funny in my book. Those were two of the funniest, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. 
uh, my boy Dion Cole, he was like, hey, yo, Sid, keep writing, you funny. You know what I mean? And these are all people who have their names in my phone. I can call up and talk to them and bother them to where they rock with me. So for me, that was my badge of honor success. You know what I mean? The money, eh, I made more money doing other shit. Yeah, damn. That would be awesome, actually. What? Have have somebody like Dion Cole say, hey, you're funny. That would That's my dude, blow man. my mind. Yeah. So where do you want to be in the next five years? What do you What do you want to do? I don't have no five year plan. I want to be alive. You know what I mean? Comments are no dead. <laughs> yeah. I want to be alive. Yeah. You know, like I said, it's the journey for me, man. Single Mingo Show. I've been doing that what fourteen years. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it's it's fun. It's I spend a lot of money. Ain't making no money on it. You know what yeah. I mean? So for me, it's just the labor of love, and it's the fun, it's the passion, the meeting, the mingling. Uh, I do think this next up with putting it on television and. Those type things it may change around to where now I can headline, which would be cool. Yeah. So if I headline, comedy clubs listen to me. If I can headline, I'm gonna bring the single mingle show first on Thursday, there and you then go. headline the rest of the week. Ta da! That's genius. So now I got the only game show, talk show, reality show in town. But now I'm taping it and I'm headlining the rest of the weekend. Yeah. Ha ha! <laughs> hey, uh, bookers, <laughs> improv people, somebody out let me put me on. <laughs> Have you thought about doing a podcast? No. Never? Not even mm-hmm. a video, just sit down and say and how talk you talk to folks? Yeah. Dude, people don't want to hear me talk. Oh, they do. <laughs> no, I, I promise you. <laughs> you, no. you are funny, man. Like, they're going to they're gonna want to listen to it. That's the thing. Like, you already said, you have to conquer the social media game. It's so weird. You have to be a comedian first, and then you have to know how to conquer social media, and then you need to actually have the time to do everything else, which is impossible. <sighs> so I have yeah. no idea how people make it anymore. Man, if you get on social media and pop and get hot and get live, you can go headline across the earth because you got yeah. a fan base. But the one beautiful thing about social media is you know exactly where your crowd is at. Yeah. Uh, a friend of mine, Brandon, uh, he's a TikTok, and he's real big. And uh, he has a huge following. And he did a show in North Carolina somewhere. I'm like, B, why'd you go there? He's like, well, say, my TikTok following is strong there. And sure enough, he had like 150, 200 oh, people wow. come see him. Yeah. But he has like a million some followers on TikTok. Yeah. But he found the one in North Carolina that's going to come see him and pay him. So, hey. I think the Single Mingle Show has the possibility to be that for you. And even in small snippets, you know what I mean? Like, we put out that clip. I think we put out more of those. It okay, be, cool. I'm it with would you. be awesome. Uh, it would work great because the show is so much fun. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I cannot wait to go. Like, <laughs> it's in my calendar. I keep looking. I'm like, oh, this is going to be fun. Yeah. And so, and I keep telling everyone about it, too. It's like, you don't understand. Like, he sings jingles and, like, has a good time and messes with the audience. It's for the and, crowd. Like, yeah. I promise you. Like, um, when I start the show, we do crowd karaoke. We don't care if you can't sing. It's crowd <laughs> karaoke. <laughs> Yay. So, I have a wireless microphone and the whole crowd has to sing. I have a DJ that plays <sighs> different songs. You have to sing at the show. Period. That's, so, now. That's so nerve wracking. <laughs> but everyone is doing it, so it's okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? So now everyone is saying, and then I got a game called I Ain't Stupid, but I'm Smarter Than You. So when I pull you on stage, if you win, you got to win three rounds in a row. So then when you win, you kick them off the stage. You have to pick somebody else out of the audience you can beat. So people are like, don't bring me up there. I'm not. I promise you. I'm not going to bring you on stage. If someone in this room brings you up, that's between you and them. It has nothing to do with me. Nothing at all. That's so genius. But it's just random. It's just random eighth grade fun. I'm a big eighth grader. Period. <laughs> that's all this is. I promise you. That's it. Have you ever had anyone like have a relationship out of it? Yeah. Like- uh, a lot of people meet at the show, man. I don't know how long it's lasted, but a lot of people <laughs> actually meet up and hook up at the show, man. Oh, that's awesome. Do you have like a period of time afterwards where they can talk or that's built into the show? Or how does that Well, work? what happens is at the beginning of the show, everyone gets a necklace. The guys get a necklace with a lock on it. I'm sorry, with a key. Girls get a lock. So you have to find the key to your heart. When you find the key to your heart, you take a picture, then I tag you, and then I give you a raffle ticket. Then I give you another necklace, you have to do it again. So you pretty much talk to every woman in the room about three or four times before we start the show. Wow. Oh, wow. I'm sorry. My mind was just blown because that's so, Why? it's so genius because it's it's like improv games kind of. Uh-huh. But, it is. But it, it's, it's, that's, that's very, like, you've got to talk to everybody, like, going around. Everybody. Yeah, that's insane. Uh-huh. And it helps break the ice completely because... Uh-huh. Like in improv, that's what you do. You know, you get in a circle and you do zip zap zop or whatever, and you get used to looking at people and not Man, being you nervous. Never did that. You never did any of that. Shit, no. Yeah, you know, it's just like like the stuff you're doing is a lot like improv games, where it just makes people feel very well, comfortable. Well, like I told you, 
from going to all those different singles events that suck, what I did was took from every program that I liked and put it into my program. Mm-hmm. So I just pretty much stole from everybody who was around and put it in a single <laughs> mingle show. And then just put comedy around it and put music into it. And, and then put, let me buy some dates and yeah. pay for people to go on a date. So it's it's the dating game. It's locks and keys. It's it's a whole bunch of different stuff that I just put together so we can meet and mingle and have fun. That's it, man. Dude, can you imagine in five years if the single mingle show, it blows up? Because it has every possibility to blow up. Oh, I appreciate it, but yeah. I don't, man. Like I said, it's the journey, man. Yeah. Like, thinking about that five years down the line, what if they do this? Man, look here. We're going to have this show. We're going to have a good show. Yeah. Uh, we're going to pack it out, have fun. I'm going to pay for some dates. going to patch it up, put it on a YouTube channel. Uh, I got a couple of people with some production networks and ties. I have like five streaming networks I can put it on once I shoot the 12 episodes mm. that I need. But we're working on it. How often do you put on the single mango show? Uh, it just depends on my money. Because right now, uh, shoot, I think I've spent on this next show coming up, I've spent about maybe four grand. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, just on the imaging and everything I have for the show, I've spent over $8,500. Yeah. So. It looks amazing. Hey, thank you. Like I said, that was the first thing I think I said to you was the art for uh, the single mingle show looks unbelievable. It's expensive. I've done it all. (laughs) I mean, it's expensive. It's not, it's not cheap. Yeah. It's definitely expensive, but hey, like I said, it's my little love child, man. And it's kind of like a big event for people because, like you said, dating sucks. Speed it's dating horrible. is terrible. Dating apps are horrible. This is just a fun way for people to get together. Just so. to come. And you don't have to be single. Yeah. You can come with your home girl, and she can be the one single, but we're all just meeting and mingling. You yeah. know what I mean? But for the most part, a lot of single people come out, but you don't have to be single to yeah. come. You can come with your wife yeah. and your husband or whoever and uh, still come get on stage and play some of these games. I was going to say, you have games for couples, I too. got games for everybody. Yeah. Like I said, I don't run it. We spin the wheel and we see how it goes. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. That's so cool. The only last thing i like to ask you, two things. Number one, what's the craziest thing you ever saw on stage? Craziest thing? Yeah. Oh, like, Ooh, yeah. Uh, Nana Lee. It was a barber. Ezel, right? He got nervous on stage. And when he got nervous, he got an erection. <laughs> no, seriously. And the more he talked, the more nervous he got. And his penis kept getting bigger <laughs> and bigger. And this is the thing, though. Like, I'm not looking, but the man was ruined. Like, he had, like, a real live unit. He probably had, like, uh, a John Jeremy type thing oh down his God. leg and it got so big it was just like because oh. he was bombing and he wasn't funny but he was all cocky oh I'm going to kill it I'm going to kill it and he got in and told his first joke it didn't work the second joke it didn't work the third joke he was oh, oh hey and then his penis started getting bigger and he was just like oh and it just kept getting bigger and oh it was it was hilarious. So did he ever do comedy after that, or did he? No, nah, I ain't seen him do comedy. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say he's probably done. Matter of fact, he owns the Fade Shop. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to the Fade Shop. I know this is a weird question, but do you have any philosophies about comedy? Anything that you've kind of put together over the years? Other than I can give you some advice. John Witherspoon told me. Yeah, hell yeah. John Witherspoon told me, he's like, "Hey, boy, come here." I'm like, "Yes, sir." He said, "You funny." He's like, "What that means?" Like, I don't know. He said, don't mean a motherfucking thing. (laughs) He's like, but doing comedy is going to give you a chance to go across the world and across the country. He said, but this is what you do. He said, no matter where you go, you see somebody throwing bags or valeting cars, you ask them, where do you go eat at? I'm like, all right. I said, then what I do? He said, when you go to that restaurant, you tell them you're from out of town, you're doing comedy, and you don't even look at the menu. You tell them you're from out of town, and you let them pick what you want to eat. And from doing that, that little bit of advice, I've had some amazing food experiences across yeah. the country. So, comics, if you ever get somewhere, take that advice. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like I said, enjoy the journey, man. That's what a lot of people don't do. Like, they, they get to a town, they stay in their hotel room, no, they never go man. see it. You gotta, I mean, if you've never been there, you don't expose, expose yourself to it. Because yeah. comedy's about life. How can you have a story if you ain't been through nothing? Yeah. You got to go through something. You got to be able to tell some people. And then when you are doing your, when you're a comic, you're not going to start out. Well, most comics, you're not going to start out at the improv. You're going to start out doing one nighters, which suck to where you'd be going to bars and clubs and shows all across country, chasing a chick, 
trying to keep gas in your car and food on the table. But you and those little small towns and small town people are the best in America because they want to show you their city. They want to show you their food. So go there and enjoy it. So then when you get on stage, oh, you don't know nothing about me. Man, I've been down to Bubba's Barbecue with a screen door broke. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I just told Bubba, put some duct tape on the motherfucker. You know what I mean? So now, oh, yeah, he did go to Bubba's. And why Bubba only got one tooth in his mouth? <laughs> oh, you know Bubba. And how come his old lady got two teeth? Between both of them, they got three teeth in their mouth together. That's a power couple called Missing Tooth. You see what I'm saying? So it's now you can create an improv the story like, oh, Bubba, he was talking about you. Bubba. You know what I mean? So you go back six months later, guess who's going to be in the crowd? Bubba oh. and his old lady. <laughs> <laughs> and them three teeth between the both of them going to be there. So Yeah, man. Thank you so much. Hey, I appreciate thank you. It. I enjoyed so, it. So go check out the Single Mingle Show. Single Mingle Show, yeah. June 1st at the Arlington Improv. 7.30. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, tickets ain't number $15. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be so much That's fun. It. Yeah. It's It'd be awesome dollars. if the whole place just sells out. 300 oh, people wow. going in. That would be amazing. So we got to find a way to do that. Other than that, thank you so much. All right, cool. Thank you, thank you. And thank you so much for watching and listening. If you've enjoyed, please support local comedy any way, shape, or form that you can. But that said, we'll see you on the next one. Hey, that's it. Bye, y'all.